Good morning, dear friends. It is good to be with you today. Uh, a little bit wider angle shot for the video this morning, though, as we have not just Chris and Julie providing special music, but also uh, a couple volunteer handbell ringers, socially distanced, wearing masks, of course. So you get to uh, be graced with a bit of extra music today. Again. I will say it is good to be here in this place with you today or wherever you are, praying to God, singing to God, and being with one another. And so, I would invite you now to join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you always. Let's pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Would you join me now as we speak together responsively the words of Psalm 89, 1 through 4 and 15 through 18. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. And this is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. And so it is 1931. Ted Husted has graduated from pharmacy school just two years earlier, and after having worked for a few pharmacist employers, is looking to set out and open his own drugstore. And scouring the landscape, all he knows is that he wants a small town with a Catholic church so he can attend Mass daily with his new wife, Dorothy. Besides these two small things, it seems that any town will do. And he finds the small town more than welcome to have him join their community of barely 300 people. Dorothy's father has already proclaimed the place God-forsaken, but the store is set up by 1931. And buried in the front end of the Great Depression, business is not good. So they make a pact. They will give this drugstore five years of their lives. So it is 1936. The end of their pact is in sight and business has not grown. Of course, they are not hungry and they do not run out of wood in the winter and they have found a loving community and a caring pastor, but the business is still the same tiny storefront that opened in 1931. And so, in the heat of July 1936, Dorothy takes the afternoon off for a nap, but returns with what will be the fuel to start an institution. She can't sleep for the sound of all of the Tin Lizzies, the Model T's, rumbling down the road towards the newly opened Mount Rushmore. Gutson Borglum is nine years into his massive project of carving a mountain. Five years from the completion of what we will see today, and people are intrigued enough to go to this godforsaken area. They must also be incredibly driving across the Great Plains in the middle of summer, let alone across the badlands of South Dakota. They must be incredibly hot and thirsty. And so this small store begins its advertising campaign. Free ice water. And the Husteads are shocked. People come. They come in such large numbers for free ice water that the store needs more space. 
They come in such large numbers that some of them even buy ice cream cones and a hundred other things. They come in such large numbers that at the height of business, they are handing out 20,000 cups of ice water a day. They come in such large numbers that 80 years later, nearly 2 million people every year will stop in that tiny South Dakota town of 700 people. The only destination with a larger tourist appeal is Mount Rushmore, just a bit down the road. Same destination all of those Model Ts were driving towards when Dorothy had her idea. You can find signs for this place across South Dakota and across the world. If you land in Antarctica, you will find a sign advertising a free cup of water only 9,333 miles away. If you don't have the bumper sticker on your car, you probably know someone that does. A cup of cold water built the empire in Wall, South Dakota that is all drunk. Last Sunday, we heard a gospel story that was both comforting and confounding. Jesus tells his disciples that the work of being a Christian is hard. It is incredibly hard work that involves us lifting up our own crosses and marching towards death. The hard work is made even more difficult by the idea that even our families that we hold so dear are not safe when it comes to Christ. Any who love father, mother, brother, sister, wife, husband, or child more than Christ are not worthy of him. Christ takes the top billing or he will take none at all. But he promises that this hard work will not be done alone. Instead, this hard work of carrying a cross, of leaving behind all that we hold dear, turning our world upside down, of living a life that is decidedly unsafe, it will all be done with him as well. Today's reading continues where we left off last week, and Jesus is giving a few more words to his disciples before they are sent out into the world to share the good news two by two. Christ tells them that the people Welcome them in the name of Christ, they welcome him. And when they welcome him, they are welcoming God. When people welcome the disciples on their journey in the name of Christ, they are welcoming God, God's self. The Lord, when was it that we welcomed you? When was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? The Lord answers, just as you did it to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Even if it was only a cup of cold water for one of my little ones. Last week, we saw the bigness of the mission, the scope and the size of Christ's calling for us in the world. Today, we hear something a bit smaller, but no less Christ-filled, offering a cup of cold water. Most of us will never serve God through martyrdom. Most of us will never abandon family and world and take up a monastic life of prayer. Most of us will never run international aid organizations or change broken public policies or open shelters for the homeless. And Christ tells us today, that's okay. How can we serve Christ? How can we serve the world? By offering a cup of cold water in the name of Christ. The mission of Christ. The mission of this church, the mission of all churches, is not one that demands great actions, but simply acts of kindness and charity and Christ. The only truly great act we know. As Mother Teresa reminds us, we cannot do great things on this earth, only small things with great love. A cup of cold water 
can be Christ to the world and the start of something vast and world-changing. What indeed would happen if we saw every offering of a cup of water or tea or lemonade as an opportunity to recognize Christ's presence? These are not just acts of mere cultural hospitality, but of welcoming people and therefore welcoming God. We so often imagine that discipleship is only huge sacrifice and great acts of faith. And sometimes that is exactly what God calls us to do. But other times, though, it's nothing more than a conversation, a handshake, or a cup of cold water for one in need. With God, with Christ, with the Spirit at our sides, until the end of the ages, in the name of Christ who gives all things, a simple cup of cold water can build the kingdom of God. May it be so. Amen. So dear friends, wherever you are, if you are at home on your couch, still in your PJs, or if you are one of the uh, lucky few bell ringers who are here, let's sing.
So called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, to meet hate with love and to welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned, especially Becky, Denny, Jesse, Maurice, Josie, Vern, Marcy, Bernice, Tom, Laura, Darani, Jan, Larry, Joy, Elizabeth, Fran, Julie, Daniel, Mary, Drake, Linda, Dan, Rosie, Matt, and all those we name aloud on our lips or silently in our hearts. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, in those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I would invite you now to join me in our Lord's Prayer in whatever words that your heart knows best. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. So, dear friends, it is never quite long enough that we get to be together on these Sunday mornings, but we trust that it is God-pleasing the time that we do have. And so, I wish you blessings on your week. I wish you good hope that we may be seeing one another again in the future, not too far off. I pray that you would be well and that you would find those opportunities in your midst, even now where that cup of cold water might be your offering. And so, dear friends, we go out as we always do with this good news, that the Lord blesses us and keeps us, the Lord's face shines on us and is gracious to us, the Lord looks upon us with favor and gives us peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.